Welcome back, everybody. Take a look at our beans. Not too bad looking. But like I said, when we came down here first pass, I knew these weeds were gonna get away from us, and man, they're sure trying. The in-between-the-row stuff is not quite so bad, but the in-row weeds, they're looking pretty shaggy. So we've got the John Deere still down here, and we're gonna try to clean them up just as, as good as we can, guys. They're, they're still gonna be pretty, hitty, uh, pretty hairy, pretty hideous looking, but we can get the between the row stuff broke open and, and get the uh, the new the little bitty sprout weeds gone get them taken care of we'll be a little bit better off let me pan around here let's see so there we are you can see the in row looking pretty hairy but there is an awful lot of weeds between the rows yet that we're gonna try to take care of try to get those cleaned up and the majority of the problem down here is still the pigweed. I got a few foxtail in here. Not a lot, but definitely going to be a problem the next year. The very back corner over there, like I was showing before, that's got a, a just phenomenal amount of uh, foxtail coming. Um, I did go ahead and raise all the gauge wheels up just a little bit so we can get a little bit more depth. And we still got the flow shields on there so we can try and get uh, as much dirt flowed out the side as we can. You see here on the end row, it's definitely doing it some good. Definitely helping. But it's, it's not going to be wheat free by a long shot. So let's get ripping here and see what this looks like. So now we're running high first, running about five and a half, six mile an hour. Clipping right along definitely a lot easier to run these taller beans and you can kind of look at the row and see well maybe you know the first pass I wiggled a little bit offset one side or the other so this pass I'm gonna try to offset the other way just to maybe wipe out some of those weeds that are a little bit close to the row like that one that's right on the inside of the frame there you can't really see it I can see it but you probably can't see it Tried to come down last week while we were in the middle of that baling, and unfortunately, you could see the wet spots. There was there was water standing in a lot of the field yet, and we weren't uh, weren't able to get through it. And we've got plenty of moisture today. She's pulling up moisture on the uh, on that disc plate over there, and in the wet spots, it's pulling up a little bit on the tires. Which you know what, so be it. We're going to have to get through it get some of this cleaned up oh yeah she's bumpy on the headbands that's part of cultivate you got bumpy headlamps follow back up and away we go when this was soybeans we only got cultivated the one time and coming straight out of CRP there was there wasn't a lot of weed pressure in here so the one time was sufficient we did attempt a second pass but again we came down and there was water standing through the majority of the field so we there wasn't anything we could do with it you know this this bump here there wasn't water standing but all this back here was underwater not a lot but just you know an inch or two or whatever and then uh, it pretty well stayed down. It was pretty wet most of the fall then. And once we came back and combined, there was still water standing. So this ground is uh, kind of weird. Last year we didn't have rain to rain enough to raise any corn, but this year we got enough that we can't come back and cultivate promptly. That's the way it goes, unfortunately.
stop here for just a minute and show you guys kind of what I was meaning. Um, can't really see them on this row, but the beans over here on the previous row, the weeds were all right up against the inside of that row right there. So I just took my tire and I drove as close to that row as I could without running it over and it cleaned them up really nice almost got all the weeds out of there oh here we go yeah see how the weeds are all right on that that side of the row right there so i just drove right next to that row and i was able to wipe most of them out i'm i'm trying to wipe out the other side here and they're on both sides so it's it's kind of counterproductive but anyway this this row and the and the, the previous pass rather they're cleaned up really nice but right now I'm in the one of the low spots. You can kind of tell by the coloring, it's really yellow. It's a little bit greener there where it's a little bit higher. But this low spot right here is, had water standing on it. And it had water standing on it two years ago. So anyway, pretty clean on that side. Let's, oh yeah, we need to get over here just a little bit. All right, slightly to the right trying to wipe the most of that out right next to the row. Really hard to see on the camera, but I can see it pretty well. Not too bad. Not too bad. Here's another one where it gets kind of thick on the left side of the row. I'm going to try to drive as close to it as I can. Pop to the other side because I got a wiggle. Yeah, kind of like that. You get the idea, I think. Yes, I know, that's that's where a two-wheel drive tractor doesn't have the wiggle, but I don't want to go buy another tractor. And these are so damn handy for doing just about everything. I don't know, some of these wet spots, they're, you could probably get through them with a two-wheel drive, but I don't even, I don't even worry with this thing, it just glides right through them. not perfect but you know what given the conditions of the year where we've had well we're still in mild drought not not you know not terrible drought because we've been getting some rains the last couple weeks but we're still in a drought there's places in Iowa that's a lot worse than us that we're fortunate to have what we've got yeah all right now bobble back the other side easier to look over here when I got to go to that side. Pretty well centered in this one so it's not going to make much difference here. Not too bad. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Ah, man. God dang. Alright, so we'll lift up back up a little ways. Now we don't wipe out another 15 foot. Back where we need to be. That's what happens for, that's what I get for running the camera. Trying to call late. Anyway. Looks like that last storm down here did a lot more than just rain ah oh, shit that one's got thorns in it man i just ran that one over god dang i don't got a thorn in the freaking tires yeah man we got branches down all the way through here son of a bitch well i just will take the time and clean these up because they're gonna get in They'll get across my shovels there and then they'll just flatten the goddamn beans. All right, god dang it. Well, we're gaining. Definitely going a lot faster since we can uh, zip along at five mile an hour. This one got thorns in it. I don't think it does. Always gotta look, cause there's a, there's a tree that looks an awful lot like a locust tree. Locusts have thorns. 
but they uh, they imitate the locust tree and they don't have thorns feels pretty safe okay finally made it to the back piece and holy cow these are a lot cleaner back here this is the one peel that we got uh, very early when the beans were just barely you know two inches tall or so and I you know I fought them and fought them all day and just kept burying some and decided to quit didn't do the other fields hey you shut up damn radio anyway well that paid off because man these are a lot nicer looking beans I did not cultivate them again the last time when we did those others because these were uh, recently done like a few days or like a week ahead of the other ones so I didn't redo these but holy cow guys wow so it definitely was worth it to uh to fight through them and and just go slow the, that very first time when they were you know just putting their their second leaf on now they're still they still got some weeds in got some foxtail down and under but man they're a lot cleaner coming up to one of our wet holes now this is the one field that we got uh, got uh, tile put in. Well, there's a pocket of weeds right there. And don't get me wrong, there's weeds in there's there's weeds down here. I can see them. I see the foxtail, but they're sure cleaner than those other fields. Just finishing up the last two end rows. I did those last this time, so I ain't got to bounce across them. This end over here, the east end of this field, is by far the cleanest. You know what I think happened when I had DJ come down, I don't know, last week or whatever, whenever, when, when we was doing those oats. He did come out and try some and said it was too wet. I think this is the end that he did. I see his tracks out here, or somebody's tracks. He, so he, I think he did this end, but he didn't do the whole field. I explain why it looks a lot better over here. Anyway, got some more trees in this damn field that blowed over. Not a, just two, two big ones and a lot of little sticks. Keep getting in the dang cultivator, plugging it up, being a pain in the ass. All right, just one more end row and then we'll be done got a problem just set it down here for this end row look back and this side's pulling funky oh fuck god dang it oh shit how am i gonna get that hook back on it's supposed to be a a pin in there like the other side's got oh shit i'll have to Set it down and see if we can't get that hook back up. Well, we got the pin back in. The uh, cotter pin or whatever the hell that is is busted off. That one's there. But unfortunately, I didn't see that bolt was broke. So essentially, it's only holding on this arm and this bolt's severely bent. Yeah, so I'm glad all we got left is short end row there and this end row here well on that one over there I guess but because I don't know I hope it'll pick it up and carry it back over here we got to go uh, all the way up through the neighbor's ground up there to the corner over there to the T and then back down the road down over here is where the pickup is that's where all that other ground is over there uh, all right let's see if it'll pick it up without causing any havoc Dang top length's trying to move, which is fine. I don't care right now. There we go. Ooh. Oh, she doesn't like it none. All right, well, I'll just fold it up then and get the door shut. Okay, we'll get the heck out of here. You can see that big storm cell right there. It's supposed to give us about. Uh, 
inch and a half of rain between tonight and tomorrow noon. So that'll be nice. At least, well, I think it's going to be most of the state, most of the southern half of the state anyway is going to get it kind of coming across diagonally. So that'll be nice. We'll get some more rain and, well, I don't know if we'll be cold eight leaves again or not. But, but not because of the bolt, but just because it's getting, getting so late. We might. We might come back and cultivate them again, but I'm going to notice one thing, too. I'm going to have to get some new shovels on this thing. I knew they were getting, you know, pretty old. They've, they've been on here since we you know, since we perched it in, like, 15. And we've run, I don't know, average probably 100 acres a year through it. 100 acres a crop, you know, two or two and a half. Sometimes we, sometimes we do a third cultivation, but not usually. But they're all, they're, most of them are pretty rounded. I noticed one of them on the, on the uh, side sweep is the other, the other, the one, they're supposed to be half cut and the other one is gone lately. So it's acting kind of like a duck foot. Anyway, yeah. Well, so far it's kind of hanging in there. We'll just have to be kind of careful going down the road. It's not swinging and causing much havoc. Well, we made it. I just got to get a new bolt. Looks like about a, I don't know, three quarter by eight or so. Kind of an odd bolt, but not just going to go to a regular hardware store and get one of those. That's kind of a big bolt. <coughs> anyway, as you can see, it's getting getting dark, so good time to get the heck out of here. I got the truck down to the other field here across the bridge. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video of the uh, cultivating and watching me from the drone. And I just thought about it since we was back down here cultivating. The answer to the question, what, uh, well, I can't see it now. What's that tractor and cultivator worth? I think we gave uh, like $1,000 for that. Maybe it was $1,500 for that cultivator in 2014. And that tractor had uh oh, what did it have like 7600 hours on it when i bought it at a farm auction about 2018 and i think we gave uh 62 6300 for it so now nowadays you you know you probably won't find one quite that cheap and that tractor's had uh, an engine put in probably from case as it's got the remanufacturer stamp or sticker whatever there on the side of the engine so who knows how many hours actually on the engine but it usually it made them i mean other than we i think i don't think i did put a ta in that one although uh that one did have uh um, the reverse idler gear which would be the gear the park paw goes on it had a bunch of teeth and stuff broke off of it like five years ago so to do one of those to do one of those uh splits you gotta lift the cab and unbolt the uh rear end from the speed transmission take the tires off take the final driver the axles off and roll that rear housing out from underneath of it completely gut it and that's like the last gear to come out of the transmission the range transmission <laughs> So we've, I mean, we've done our maintenance on it and kept it up and it's a good tractor. I'm sure glad we put all the interior in it, put the new radio in it. That thing is a doll to drive now. So there's the answer to the question. That, uh, that setup is about $9,000. Comparatively, to get a uh, two-wheel drive tractor of that size, you know, that's a 150 horse factory and we've got it turning like 175. You'd have to have, uh, well, you have to bump up to like a 5488 to get that big of a output. And those are bringing, you know, 25,000. You probably could have got one at that time when I bought that one for 22, you know. Two wood drives just cost a lot more. The 86 series, they didn't have anything that big. The 1586 is, I don't, I don't care for that three-speed. You could turn a 14 up pretty hot, but they're 
they're not as big as an anteater. They've, you know, anteater's got four tires pulling and an 86, you know, has got two wheels pulling, unless you buy a front wheel assist and those don't turn with the shit. Anyway, I'm just kind of rambling as I'm walking. See, they finally got the, uh, the uh, approach to the bridge concreted. And they were parked here when I got here this, this noon. I said, hey, can I drive across this? Well, no. I said, well, man, I'm, I need right, you know, God, I got to work on both sides. Oh, well, yeah, you can drive on the one lane as long as you don't drive on that side because that's fresh. <sighs> anyway. All right, guys. You know what to do. Smash that subscribe button. Any questions? Any comments? Maybe what you think kind of tractor we should... Uh, move up to to cultivate beans or corn or whatever two-wheel drive version i really like a magnum but i don't think i could trade all three anteaters off and get a decent magnum then no, no, no. what would one magnum do compared to three anteaters i mean anyway all right guys till the next video thanks for watching catch you later